I am, I am Kanye West. And that feels really great to say, especially this year. Kanye Amari West was born in Atlanta, Georgia on June 8, 1977. His father, Ray, was a photojournalist for the Atlanta Journal newspaper and was also politically active in the Black Panthers. He later became a Christian counselor. West's paternal grandfather, West told Chris Champion of England's Daily Telegraph newspaper, was the original hustler. He shined shoes and did whatever he had to do to send all his kids to college. West's mother, Donda, was a teacher who became a professional of English at Chicago State University and eventually her son's manager before she died at the age of 58 from a heart disease after cosmetic surgery in 2007. Her passing would profoundly affect West musically as well as personally. Ray and Donda divorced amicably when West was three. After that, he was raised on Chicago's middle-class South Shore neighborhood by his mother and spent summers with his father. At the age of 10, West moved for a year with Donda to China, where she taught as part of a university exchange program. He was the only foreigner in his class. After returning to Chicago, West was drawn to the South Side's hip hop scene and he befriended the DJ and producer No ID, who became his mentor. We really have a lot of little and interesting details about the hard life of the famous billionaire rapper Kanye West, and we're sure you'd love to know these details that not too many people know about him here on the Hip Hop X YouTube channel. But before we dive deep into the controversial lifestyle of the rapper, we want you to take one second out of your precious time to leave us a like. Then, drop a comment in the comment section telling us what issues in the world of music you want to see us make videos about. And once you've done that, go ahead and smash the red subscribe button and turn on the notification bell icon right beside it so that you'll get notified by YouTube when we drop your requested video. And now that I know you've liked, commented, subscribed, and turned on notifications, let's now take a full dive into the life of Kanye West. West graduated from Polaris High School and won a scholarship to study at Chicago's American Academy of Art but dropped out of college altogether to pursue music, an act that would inform the title of his first solo album years later. An initial brush with Big Time helped to divert West's interest away from higher education. The Colombian label made noises about offering him a recording contract, and he was shuttled to Columbia's office in a limousine. But West mishandled his meeting with Columbia executive Michael Malden, claiming confidently that he would be bigger than superstar Michael Jackson or Atlanta producer and rapper Jermaine Dupri, not knowing at the time that Malden was Dupri's father. Whether or not it was because of that faux pas, West's promised contract did not materialize, but the experience only strengthened his determination. Initially, it was West's production skills that helped him break into the music business. In 1997, he co-produced some cuts on rapper Mace's album, Harlem World. Mace later returned the favor by making a guest appearance on a remix of Jesus Walks. He notched another success as a writer and producer in the late 1990s, but his music business profile spiked sharply upward after he began working with rapper Jay-Z, one of the top hip-hop hit makers of the day. After spending time producing for local artists, West developed a signature style dubbed Chipmunk Soul, characterized by sped-up soul samples. He then moved to New York in 2001. Here he got his big break, handling the production for Jay-Z's track This Can't Be Life, which appeared on the 2000 album Dynasty Rock Love Familia. The following year, he cemented his burgeoning reputation by producing four songs on Jay-Z's The Blueprint, widely regarded as one of the greatest rap albums of all time. From there, West went on to produce other stellar talents, including the rappers Mos Def, Talib Kweli, and Ludacris, and the singers Alicia Key and Beyonce. But West was not content to be a backroom player. He wanted to be the headline act, but initially struggled to be taken seriously as a rapper. He pleaded with Rockefeller Records to let him rap, but his co-founder, Jay-Z, later told Time Magazine, We all grew up street guys who had to do whatever we had to to get by. Then there's Kanye, who to my knowledge has never hustled a day in his life. I didn't see how it could work. Wes got a similar response from other labels. I'd leave meetings crying all the time, he recalled. With reluctance, Damon Dash signed Wes to Rockefeller in 2002, but he did so mostly to retain him as a producer. That October, as Wes was driving home from a recording session in a California studio, he was involved in a head-on car collusion that left him with a shattered jaw. He wrote and recorded a song about the experience, Through the Wire, with his jaw still wired shut following the reconstructive surgery. He then wrote much of the rest of his debut album while recuperating in LA. But once the album was complete, it was leaked online. In response, Wes decided to make it better. He revised and rewrote songs and refined the production adding stronger drums, gospel choirs, and strings. He paid for orchestras out of his own pocket. The album was finally released in February 2004. It sold 2.6 million copies and made West a star. 
Titled The College Dropout, it broke the gangster rap mold with themes including consumerism. He was critical of it back then, racism, higher education, and his religious beliefs. Much of the album was marked by West Pointed sense of humor, rooted in everyday situations. Workout Plan, satirized aerobics program and their music, while Spaceship depicted the frustrations of a token black employee at a mall clothing store. All Falls Down took aim at materialism, with his jab at a single black female addicted to retail. New versions of Slow Jams and Through the Wire were also included. The most successful track from College Dropout was Jesus Walks, which West, clad in white, performed at the 2005 Grammy Awards ceremony. Three separate videos of the song were aired. On the single Jesus Walks, he rapped, They can say you can rap about anything except for Jesus. That means guns, sex, lies, videotapes, but if I talk about God, my records won't get played. Religiously oriented hip-hop has been attempted almost since the genre's beginnings. But Jesus Walks, with his serious marching band rhythms and rhythmically complex gospel vocal group backing, sounded completely new. The song referred to police abuse and included a long passage in which West listed hustlers, killers, murderers, drug dealers, even the strippers, and had his backing vocal group affirm that Jesus walks for them. Ebony Davis praised West for his amalgamation of the street hustlers' credo and the black protestant ethos. With his mother Donda serving as his manager and experiencing what she described to Christians as a huge learning curve in moving from her professional duties to the music industry, West went on tour with R&B superstar Usher. The college dropout peaked at number 2 on the Billboard Hot 200 chart, and West received 10 Grammy nominations, winning 3 awards including Best Rap Song for Jesus Walks and Best Rap Album. He lost the Best New Artist award to rock group Maroon 5, who seemed surprised to win and praised West from the podium as they accepted the award. Sales of the college dropout, even in a depressed music market, rose towards the 3 million mark. Shortly after the album was released, West founded his record label, Good Music, an acronym for Getting Out of Our Dreams, in conjunction with Sony BMG. He would put out music by John Legend, Big Scene, Common, Pusha T, and more. West's huge ego, which gave him the confidence to defy hip-hop stereotypes and record the album, became a huge part of his public personality. I do music for the sake of showing off, he told Ryan of Spin, explaining that he shows off through music like some people flaunt their cars. He complained to interviewers about one review that gave his album a grade of B+. My CD is so good, people have to buy second and third copies because other people will be stealing them. He bragged to New York Daily News Farber. Sometimes West arrogance has alienated people, especially after he walked out of the American Music Awards, furious that he lost the award for Best New Artist to country star Gretchen Wilson. He was preparing to launch a line of sneakers, and his preppy look, which he himself compared to that of the character Carlton on the television series The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, seemed to offer potential big dividends in his total divergence from the bling-bling trends of the day. Unattached after several years in a committed relationship, he inspired speculation about his romantic future. The only question mark was his sophomore CD, Late Registration, whose release date was pushed back several times and was finally slated for the summer of 2005. At first, West seemed daunted by the idea of following up on what was widely considered a hip-hop masterpiece, but by 2005 he had warmed to the task. The best thing about success is being able to get my creative ideas out, he told Davis. That's why I rap in the first place, so my voice can be heard. West spent a year and $2 million on his sophomore album, hiring an orchestra and working with the composer John Brion, who had never worked with a rapper before. West, the restless Borges creative, wanted to see how far he could expand hip-hop, he told the New York Times. The results were spectacular, yielding another three Grammy wins, Best Rap Album Again, plus Best Rap Song for Diamonds from Sierra Leone, and Best Rap Solo Performance for Gold Digger. Late Registration debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 200, a feat West would repeat with every subsequent solo album release. On late registration, the Louis Vuitton Don doesn't just set out to create pop music, he wants to be pop music, wrote Rob Sheffield in Rolling Stone's five-star review of the album. So he steps up his lyrical game, shows off his epic production skills, reaches higher, pushes harder, and claims the whole world of music as hip-hop turf. West also displayed his political passion with two benefit performances in the summer of 2005. First, he performed at the Live 8 concert, meant to raise awareness about poverty and debt in the third world. Then, after Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast of the United States in late August, West joined the Benefit A concert for Hurricane Relief. It was broadcast on NBC TV four days after the storm, when the country was still watching terrifying news footage of UVAC e stranded and even dying in downtown New Orleans. West caused a national media storm, his first, but by no means his last. He criticized the federal government's response to the crisis in remarks carried live on national television. 
George Bush doesn't care about black people, he charged. According to the Associated Press, adding that the country is set up to help the poor, the black people, the less well off, as slow as possible. Articulating widespread criticism of the president for not visiting the devastated city of New Orleans right away. Bush was deeply stung by West's comment, later calling it a disgusting moment. After touring with U2 in 2005 to 2006, Wes was inspired to make hip hop more anthemic, to be performed in stadiums and arenas. He began to draw influence from both rock and roll, The Stones, Led Zeppelin, The Killers, and house music, which originated in his hometown of Chicago. This led to his third album, Graduation, on September 11, 2007. It dropped the same day as 50 Cent's album, Curtis. In what was hyped as a battle for hip hop soul, the erudite showman versus the bullet scarred street thug. But with Graduation's groundbreaking, for hip hop, palais of layered electronic synthesizers and sloganeering wordplay. I'm like the fly, Malcolm X by any jeans necessary, he smirked on Good Morning. There could only be one winner. West's album sold 957,000 copies in its first six days, going straight to number one. With the music industry beginning to wring its hands about the effect of the internet on its profit margins, West simply embraced the change with his video for the single Can't Tell Me Nothing for which he hired the comedian Zach Galifianakis to lip-sync along to the lyrics on an alternate version, creating a viral sensation on YouTube. West was on top of the world, hailed as the artist who had killed gangster rap. And then, in November 2007, tragedy struck. His beloved mother Donda died from a heart attack following cosmetic surgery. During his first concert following the funeral, he dedicated a performance of Hey Mama to her. Months later, West broke up with his fiance, Alexis Pfeiffer. His next album, 808s and Heartbreak, released 12 months after his mom died, was shot through with grief, pain, and alienation. West even abandoned rapping altogether, preferring to sing through an auto-tuned vocal processor, which lent his voice a robotic tune, a technique now ubiquitous in hip-hop. He classified the new album as pop art, not to be confused with the visual art movement, and announced, hip-hop is over for me. It wasn't, he won two Grammys for guest raps he made that year on Estelle's America Boy and Ty Swagger Like Us. The fragility of West's mind was called into question at the MTV Video Music Awards the following year. At the ceremony in Radio City Music Hall in New York, he invaded the stage during Taylor Swift's acceptance speech for the Best Female Video Award for You Belong to Me to protest that Beyonce should have won instead. The reverberations from that moment are still being felt. West apologized, then retracted his apology in a New York Times interview in 2013. By 2015, they had become friends and were even spotted at dinner together. Then in 2016, Kanye wrapped up his famous, I feel like me and Taylor might still have sex. Why? I made that bitch famous. Swift hit back from on stage at the 2016 Grammy Awards, this time uninterrupted, with the words, I want to say to all the young women out there, there will be people along the way who will try to undercut your success and take credit for your accomplishments. Don't let those people sidetrack you. After the Swift debacle, West took a break from music to focus on fashion. He had already been collaborating with labels, including a bathing ape and Nike on limited edition sneakers since 2006. He even reportedly interned at Gap in 2009 and later Fendi to gain experience. He launched his first collaboration in Paris in 2011, but it was widely planned. You can't just dump some fox fur on a runway and call it luxury, sniffed Long Guin, style director at Flaunt Magazine. West gave a wounded sounding speech at the show's after party. Please be easy, he said. Please give me a chance to grow. After his second collection a year later, received a lukewarm reception, West announced he would no longer be showing up in Paris. He collaborated with the French label APC on a capsule collection in 2013 and signed a $10 million deal with Adidas. Launching his first apparel collection, Yeezy, Season 1, with the brand on October 2015. The line has had mixed reception, although his Season 5 collection in February 2017 won praise from Anna Wintour. I like it a lot, she told New York Post, a little bit more focused than sometimes we've seen from him. Wes returned to music in November 2010 with his fifth album, with paranoid celebrity and rampant consumption the dominant themes. It was a bombastic and towering moment to self-aggrandizement that sounded like an instant greatest hit according to Pitchfork. It was the best and worst of Kanye West rolled into one, a magnum opus that bordered on the delusional. It yielded four singles, including Munster, on which West, Jay-Z, and Rick Ross were memorially battered into runner-up spots by a blistering guest verse from Nicki Minaj. West and his old sparring partner Jay-Z then released a collaboration album, Watch the Throne, in 2011. It yielded seven singles, including Otis and Inward in Paris, and added three more Grammy wins to West and Jay-Z's respective halls. 
In 2012, Wes released a compilation album, Cruel Summer, showcasing artists on his good music label. But that year, the headlines were more concerned over his relationship with the reality TV star Kim Kardashian, which began in April. They got engaged on October 21, 2013, after Wes proposed at the AT&T Baseball Stadium in San Francisco. And they got married on May 21, 2014, in the historic Fort di Belvedere in Italy. Andrea Buccelli sang as Kardashian walked down the aisle, in front of guests that included the designer Rachel Roy, the tennis champion Serena Williams, the film director Steve McQueen, and music star legend Q-Tip, Rick Rubin, Tyga, and Lana Del Rey. The couple have four children, daughter North, born June 15, 2013, son Saint, born December 5, 2015, and another daughter born via surrogate on January 15, 2018, and their fourth child, Psalm, via surrogate in May 2019. Anyone listening to West's sixth album, Yeezus, which came out in June 2013, would hear little evidence that the rapper was living an idyllic existence. Sonically, the album was abrasive, raw, and almost entirely melody-free. West had enlisted the producer, Rick Rubin, to make wholesale changes just days before the release. Lyrically, West sounded paranoid and narcissistic to the point of bathos, especially on I Am A God, which contained the immortal line, Hurry Up With Madame Croissant. West claimed the album was an attack on the commercial, and certainly it contained little that was radio-friendly, barring the magnificent glam rock-inspired single Black Skinhead, the first of only two singles from the album. Yeezus remains the only West album to have sold fewer than 1 million copies in the US. Yet, it was critically well-received, not least by rock legend Lau Reed, who told Rolling Stone that each track is like making a movie. That guy really, really, really is talented. A Twitter spat erupted that September with West and Jimmy Kimmel after the talk show host mocked an interview West had given to the BBC in the UK. Kimmel hired child actors to recite some of West's more bombastic quotes on his show, but West was far from amused. Jimmy Kimmel was out of line to try and spoof in any way the first piece of honest media in years, read one of a series of angry tweets. Kimmel gleefully read out West's tweets during his next show, sparking more opprobrium from the rapper, who shared a link to a Slate article titled Kanye Was Right. The following month, West appeared in person on Jimmy Kimmel Live. The interview lasted most of the episode and featured several free-flowing Kanye monologues, covering everything from his career to his thoughts on the paparazzi, Steve Jobs, and Jesus. I don't know if you know this, but a lot of people think you're a jerk, joked Kimmel, although he went on to praise West's character. It turned out the two had known each other prior to this bat, which is why West had been hurt by Kimmel's portrayal of him. Kimmel admitted that considering a celebrity's feelings was not something that comes to mind when I'm cooking up a comedy sketch. By the end of the show, they had cleared the air. At the start of 2015, West became the only rapper in history to record with Paul McCarthy, releasing a single, 4 or 5 seconds, with the Beatles legend and Rihanna. But a month later came another award show disruption, this time at the Grammys where West objected to Beck winning the Best Album Award. Beck needs to respect artistry, and he should have given his award to Beyonce, West said after the ceremony. Months later, he retracted his statement in an interview with the Sunday Times newspaper in England. I was inaccurate with the concept of a gentleman who plays 14 instruments not respecting artistry, he said. In March, West was announced as a co-owner of the music streaming service Tidal, along with various other artists including Beyonce, Jay-Z, Rihanna, Madonna, Chris Martin, and Nicki Minaj. In June, he headlined the Glastonbury Festival in the UK, despite a petition of 135,000 signatures asking for him to be removed from the bill. There was more controversy in the run-up to his seventh album, The Life of Pablo. Before its release on February 14, 2016, West hit the headlines for a series of controversial tweets, including one that proclaimed Bill Cosby on trial for drugging and raping women to be innocent. He started a beef with rapper Wiz Khalifa, whom he mistakenly believed to have criticized his wife, Kim Kardashian. I am your OG, and I will be respected as such, West tweeted. He also apologized to Michael Jordan for appearing to diss the basketball legend in his lyrics. And then the day after his album came out, West bizarrely urged his followers to lobby Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg to invest $1 billion into West's ideas. He also claimed to be $53 million in debt. The album itself was another change of direction, and another triumph. It covered a much broader sonic sweep than Yeezus, incorporating a vast array of sound, styles, and influences. From trap to gospel to autotune, crooning to event pop, classic soul, and dancehall. Guest vocalists included Frank Ocean, Chance the Rapper, Rihanna, Designer, and Kid Cudi. 
It became West's sixth solo album in succession to debut at number one on the Billboard 200 chart. On November 20th, 2016, while on his St. Pablo tour, West stopped a concert in Sacramento to embark on a garbled rant about radio playlists. MTV, Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Beyonce, and Jay-Z. Jay-Z, call me bruh, I know you got killers. Please don't send them at my head, were some of the things he said. It was the second time within a week that he had ranted on stage and voiced support for Trump, and this time it sounded like a public breakdown. He did not complete the show. The following day, he canceled the remaining 21 days of his tour, citing exhaustion. Subsequently spending eight days hospitalized at UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles. In February 2017, the Good Music president Pusha T said in an interview that Wes was working on a new album. Rumors surrounding the album's development continued to surface, with some reports saying the award-winning artist had retreated to the mountains of Jackson Hole, Wyoming for creative inspiration. Wes began working his way back into the news cycle in April 2018 with the announcement that he was writing a philosophy-themed book, Break the Simulation. Days later, he confirmed the rumors about new material in a rapid-fire series of tweets, declaring he would drop two albums within a week of one another in June, the second one involving longtime collaborator Kid Cudi. The artist then caused a stir when his tweets veered towards his support for President Trump, calling him my brother and noting how they share a dragon energy, even posting a selfie in which he wears Trump's Make America Great Again hat. West later sought to clarify things by saying he loved Hillary Clinton too, and didn't agree with everything the president said. I don't agree 100% with anyone but myself, he wrote. In an early interview of May 2018 with TMZ, West revealed that he had been addicted to opioids prior to his November 2016 onstage meltdown and hospitalization, which he began taking after undergoing liposuction because I didn't want y'all to call me fat. He also raised eyebrows by describing the history of African American enslavement in the US as a choice, his words again inflaming social media outrage and prompting another attempt at clarifying explanations later. On May 31st, 2018, West held an exclusive listening party in Jackson Hole for industry insiders and select celebrities, like Chris Rock and Jonah Hill, to debut his new studio effort, Yee. The seven-track album, which includes contributions from Kid Cudi and Minaj, touched on issues ranging from the sexual assault accusations facing Russell Simmons to the Tristan Thompson and Khloe Kardashian cheating saga, to the rapper's own controversial comments about slavery and being bipolar. West expanded on the bipolar topic in a subsequent interview, confirming that he had recently been diagnosed. Echoing his track's lyrics about how it is his superpower, he insisted that the condition fueled his creativity, but also admitted that it led to unfortunate consequences. Think about people who have mental issues that are not Kanye West. Think about somebody that does exactly what I did at TMZ, but they just do it at work, he said. Then, Tuesday morning, they come back and they lost their job. On June 12, 2018, it was revealed that Yee had debuted at number one on the Billboard 200. It marked West's eight consecutive chart-topping album, matching the record held by the Beatles and Eminem. Additionally, all seven tracks from Yee had cracked the top 40 with Yikes charting highest at number eight. In early 2019, West debuted his Sunday service sessions, performances of the rapper and associates singing gospel versions of his hit songs from various locations. Little was known about these invite-only sessions, with the public getting glimpses via social media clips. West then brought a larger-scale version of his new project to Coachella in April for a special Easter Sunday show, in which he and a large contingent of singers and dancers dressed in matching mauve robes performed atop a man-made mountain. Meanwhile, the artist continued working on a new album titled Yandi with a planned release date of September 29, 2018. The album was pushed back to November 23rd before being delayed indefinitely. In August 2019, it was announced that another studio project, Jesus is King, would be released on September 27th, though that date also passed with no sign of the promised album. The gospel-tinged Jesus is King was finally unveiled on October 25th, the same day as a 35-minute IMAX film of the same title that documented one of the artist's Sunday service sessions. At the Hollywood Bowl in November, West debuted Nebuchadnezzar, an opera featuring Sunday service style choir singing with his creator reading Bible passage from off to the side of the stage. He followed with Mary, an opera based on the native story, before releasing the 19-track gospel album Jesus is Born on Christmas Day. On June 30th, 2020, West released a single titled Wash Us With The Blood, featuring fellow American rapper and singer Travis Scott, along with the music video, which serves as the lead single from his upcoming 10th studio album, Donda, and draws similarities to the song from his 2013 album, Yeezus. 
However, in September 2020, West stated that he would not be releasing any further music until he's done with his contract with Sony and Universal. In a Twitter rant about record company contracts, payments towards artists and musicians, and the topic of ownership of their masters. On October 16th, he released the single, Na Na Na. On October 29th, a remix was previewed over Twitter, featuring American rappers DaBaby and 2 Chains. The remix was released on November 13th. On December 25th, 2020, exactly one year after the release of Jesus is Born, West Sunday Service released a new EP entitled Emmanuel. The mini-album, executively produced by West, consists of five songs entirely in Latin based in the style of Gregorian chant. On that same date, Playboy Cardi's Whole Lot of Red was released, with West serving as an executive producer of the album and appearing on the track Go to the Moon. On July 4th, 2020, West tweeted that he was running for president. We must now realize the promise of America by trusting God. Unifying our vision and building our future, I am running for president of the United States. During his presidential campaign rally of his, West revealed that he had previously wanted his first child aborted, but Kardashian refused. West made the comment acknowledging the possibility of Kardashian ending their marriage because of it. Later that month, West wrote on Twitter that he had been attempting to divorce Kardashian. He separately wrote that Kardashian family was attempting to lock me up. West held his first campaign rally on July 19, 2020 in Charleston, South Carolina. With 2020 shaved into his head, he spoke about Planned Parenthood, marijuana, and slavery, among other subjects, in his speech that lasted for over an hour. On October 12, he dropped his first campaign video urging voters to write his on their ballots. West eventually conceded and alluded to a presidential run in 2024. In January 2021, reported that the couple were discussing divorce, and on February 19, 2021, Kardashian officially filed for divorce. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed watching the video, go ahead and demolish that like button. Then, like we said earlier, tell us in the comments section what rapper or issues in the music industry you would want to see us make videos about. Finally, don't forget to smash the red subscribe button and hit the notification button so that you'll get notified when we drop a video on the topic you requested. With all that said, we'll see you in the next video. Let's go!